All right, so the observer. Um, yeah, so with the observer, you just use, I always use a mug, but whatever it is, if you're holding a mug or if you see a camera or an object, just notice that when you observe an object, especially when you observe, we use the coarse language. This is generally, for most people, a meaningless object. Mean, meaningless object means it's not particularly special to most people. So when you have a meaningless object and it's observed, um, it's noticed that um, the observer of the object, one has very clear detachment of the observing of the object. So when, when one observes the mug, it's very clear that the, the observer is not the mug. Now, that's usually the case for what we call meaningless objects. Meaningless objects, there's usually no confusion, and there's a lot of space between the object and the observer of the object. Okay? Also, uh, things to know, notice with that, when you have clear... Now, this is not intellectual. So the observer... So don't use your head. We'll go into the thoughts next. But the observing of the object... So if you do this, it's a spiritual experience that the witnessing or the witnesser or the observer of the object is not the object. And even if the object moves from side to side, uh, it still doesn't affect that which is observing it. So it, an object can be still, it can move. Uh, it can also, the object cannot be there. Even if it's not there, notice as well that the observer is still here, whether the object is in front of it or not. So, okay. So that's the thing, and, and I, I only put that as like a calibration. When I say a calibration, just check your spiritual experience that with the mug or an object or a camera or a plant, that when you have a detached observing of a meaningless object, one can get, you know, spiritually you experience, there is the experience that the witnesser is not the object, and there's lots of space. There's complete detachment. Okay. So the next thing is, now that's very, very easy to do, and everyone will find that very, very easy with what I call meaningless objects. Like if there's a cloud in the sky that's drifting past, and the observer, most people don't say when they see a cloud, say, I am the cloud. You know, I haven't heard anyone get confused that they are a cloud yet. Maybe they would be, but who knows. So just like, so the observer, the observer of the cloud is not the cloud, there's space. And there's absolute spiritual clarity that the cloud is an object that passes by, but is not the self that observes it. So that's an experience. Okay, so the next thing, I um, mean, the Course says, all my thoughts are meaningless. That's an interesting question, because it's, uh, you know, the Course is, the Course of Miracles is removing the blocks to love. So, now, if, so... What's the opposite of a, me a meaningful thought? It would be a special thought. Yeah. Now, thoughts. Now, we've done it with a mug. Now, thinking and thoughts that pass by. So, thoughts are passing by in consciousness. But now, let let's go into experience. Is there a witnessing of thoughts? Is there an observer of thoughts? You know... <clears throat> So thoughts, you know, th you know, this is in your own experience. So there are thoughts. There may be thoughts may be going by quickly, or they may be going by slowly. But is there something here which is observing the thoughts pass by, which is not the thoughts? Yeah. So is there a detached observing or a witnessing of thoughts? Now, of course, if you're addicted to your thoughts, or if your thoughts are special, this exercise may seem difficult. Now, the, the way that you get booby-trapped with it is because if there's interest in a thought, you get sucked into the field of thoughts. If you hook into thoughts, then it's almost like the experience is, I am my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the Course says, all my thoughts are meaningless. So is there, if you don't give interest or investment or value to the thoughts that are passing by, is there something, this is an experience, don't think about this, because it, to think about this would be going into your thoughts. Use spiritual experience. Is there a witnessing, an observer of thoughts, which is not thoughts? Yes. Good. So, use this. Now, if, you, if this is difficult, 
see if there's a detached observer that doesn't hook into thoughts. Suddenly that might get lost. The only reason it gets lost or there's confusion is there's suddenly interest in a special thought and then the observer disappears because one is hooked into a meaningful thought. Actually meaning is just a projection, uh, for, uh, is a perception if you like of the ego. So once you've got the experience of a witnessing of thoughts then it becomes clear. Now if the witnesser of the thoughts passing by if there's clear detached witnessing of the thoughts passing by, that excellent. Just stay in that detached. But if the witnesser is not, isn't detached from the thoughts, but seems to be hooking into the thoughts, or getting lost in the thoughts, or there seems to be enmeshment, or there even seems to be the experience that I am my thoughts and there's no observer, then see if there is what I call a detached observing of thoughts. Or if there is an or if there is an observer that's getting confused and going into the thoughts, see if there is something that's observing the confused observer. Now as you get this experience of a field of consciousness which is not related to thoughts, just like one gets a, uh, an experience that the observer of clouds is not related to the clouds out there. The observer of a mug on the table is not the mug. So th and then one gets the spiritual experience that that which is observing thoughts is not thoughts. They're just objects that pass by. With no, um, they're not related. What you'll notice with thoughts is that they are objects or form or limited and they pass by. But now, uh, so once you get the experience, if you get lost, just go back to the observing. Just keep repeating the exercise if you get lost in your thoughts. Also recognize that n another thing that some people do is visualize. But r visualizing is making pictures. But actually, if, if I pass a photo before everyone, is the observer of the photo the photo? Or is there something that observes pictures which is not a picture? So do again the same thing. So that which observes thoughts and pictures passing by, See, uh, see the nature of that. Is the observer of pictures in any way connected to a picture passing by in consciousness? So all kinds of things can pass by before the observer. Now, so we've got thoughts. The next thing is the, is the body. Like, a, you know, the Course in Miracles says, I'm not a body, I'm free, for I am as God created me. I, I think the body is a great thing because like with a mug, Remember a mug ha is an object, it's got a height and a width, and when the observer observes the, the mug, it's like the observer is seeing an object with a height and a width, and the observer of the object is not the object in any way related. Now lots of people may have what I call a sense of the body. You know, oh yes, I, I've got some kind of awareness, my body's this tall and it's this here and it feels like it's located in this area of the room. That's what I call an object. But that which observes the body, what is observing the height and the width or the sense of the body? You know, sometimes the body seems to be quite dense and quite strong. Sometimes it seems quite, sometimes it may not even be in a consciousness. But what observes the sense of body when it's here, when it's not here, as it's getting stronger or weaker? Is that which observes the body just like that which observes the, the, the mug, or that which observes or witnesses thoughts, doesn't matter which word you use, observe or witness, is the witnesser of the body in any way connected to the body? Just like is the witnesser of a cloud connected to a cloud, or is the witnesser of a mug on the table connected, or the witnesser of thoughts? Is there, a, is there any relationship between the witnesser of thoughts passing by? <clears throat> now, objects, you know, the Course in Miracles talks about form and the formless. You know, so as you get, as you delve into the nature of, shall we say, spirit or the, or the self, we are finding whether the, you know, all kinds of things pass before it. But the nature, the nature of the observer, is it lit? I like to use the word, is it, has it got any experience of being an object that can pass, pass? Has it got any experience of being limited? Has it got any experience of, uh, of form? Because the Course talks about things being of form 
and that which is formless. So is the observer an object or is it objectless? You know. So the next thing is, um, so if you get experience of that which is observing thoughts, that which observes the body but is not the body, that which observes, observes thoughts but is not of thought, if, if it's difficult, if you feel enmeshed with the body yeah, do, or yeah. enmeshed with thoughts, mm -hmm. see if there's something observing the enmeshment or the hooks. What wants to hook in? What wants to glue into? Um, there's only like a glue or a hook for things which are special or meaningful or have value. But actually one can withdraw, one can unhook, one can detach, one can release value, one can so there is something, and also the glue that wants to hook into a thought, or hook into the body, or hook into an object, that tendency to do that. Is there something here which is observing that? Which, is, there some, is there a field of witnessing, or a field of consciousness that doesn't want to hook in? That's here. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to drop, we're trying to drop thoughts, we're trying to drop hooking into the body, identifying, attaching. But the, the thing that I like from the Course is m meaningless and meaningful, or special, or uh, whatever, the, uh, the absence of specialness. So, the ultimate field of consciousness, does it want to pick up something that creates the experience of being limited or separated, or being a dot? Another, another exercise to do is location. This is, I, I think this is an interesting one. Is there a sense of location, like I'm located in this area of the room, you know, or I'm, I'm here? If there's a sense of location, is there something that witnesses location? Because location is like in a, spatially in a place, but that which observes things which are in a location. There's something that observes location. If you go into the experience of that which is witnessing location, does location exist? in that which is the witnesser of locations, the observer of locations. So we've got location. Now, people have, it's a, this is a subtle one, the sense of time. Mm. Like some people have like a little clock in their head. It's not very conscious, but something's like picking up seconds or knows like a minute's passed by or... But is there something here which observes time, which is not interested in time? Is there that which observes the hooking into the sense of time, or the, I call it the tracking of time. Is there a field of consciousness which is not interested in time here? This is an, a spiritual experience. Don't go to your head to do this. If there's any sense of time, what witnesses this? And in that watching, the non-interested field of observing time, does time exist? So these are all this, these are what I call all the the things which pull one into uh, the fields of separated consciousness. You know, the sense that I'm a body, or I'm in location, or I am my thinking, or I am, in, I am counting seconds. But with your experience, don't go to your head. The worst thing to do is try and think about this. Drop, drop the thoughts. If you touch a thought, drop it. Because the th all thoughts are meaningless. I just take the course to be good on that one for the time being and just use your experience to see the nature of consciousness now. So what we're going to do, now if you hook into something, see if you can unhook or detach. Now, whatever, wherever you are, self-inquiry is whatever you experience yourself to be, see if there is an observer of that. And is, if the nature of that, which is observing form or, or separation, is there's an experience of, of form or separation or object, see if there's something that witnesses that sense of separation or object. So we're, we're inquiring into the nature of the self to see if the nature of the self is uh, limited, finite, an object, uh, whether the nature of the self can pass by uh, or not. Or if is the absolute nature, the true intrinsic nature of self, can it be an object or something that can pass by? So we're going to just have two or three minutes, just in silence, just to have self, just have our inner self-exploratory experience, and just to see where we go with that exercise.